Hey, ladies, can you hear me? Put a one. I think I'm good to go. Oh, perfect, perfect. Hey, ladies. All right. Uh, it just dawned on me that I need to talk about a couple of things about these dirty niggers. And it hasn't been said in a while because, uh, you know, in my private discussions, we talk about things concerning us very directly with full accountability as black women. Full accountability, total compassion and empathy, but with the intention to be responsible and move forward as women. And that allows us to explore a lot of conversations. I get a lot out of it, but I wanted to talk about these dirty bitches. And I was, you know, I, for part of my work, I observe things with black women. I observe things with all women. I observe things with wherever I live. I observe things with males. At one time, I call myself the black male whisperer. And now, also consider myself the black female whisperer. I don't really use it as a title, but that's just what it is. And I have a lot of other ladies who detect the shit that's going on with us as well. Shout out to RJ. Shout out to First Mel B, Diva Kika, Winter Glow, Goddess Y. Thank you, ladies, for your support. Everybody in the chat, I want to say shout out to you too. T Rose, Amber O, Mary Mello, I Dash Y'all, Rachel, Nikki, and definitely what's up, Miss T, Bella Goff. And ancient Aquarius, <laughs> that's cool. That's a cool name. Let me tell you something. If if you did not get an invitation to my private live that I did about um, Risa Tisa, send me a message in the Patreon, and I'll make sure you get the link. But I want y'all to know. There's a lot of shit that's going down, and we do not have time to be fucking around as black women. This is a lifelong warfare. The warfare is a lifelong warfare, and a lot of women, they... Can I just talk to you, damn it? A lot of women are going soft and weak. And, you know... I, I consider myself a lady. Sometimes I consider myself a fucking lady. <laughs> but I'm a motherfucking lady too. And a lot of women want to run away from the fact that our asses are in some deep spiritual warfare. And I refuse to uh, turn a blind eye to it. I refuse to turn any kind of eye to it because when we were young and we did not all get a chance to talk to each other's women, to basically expose what the fuck these uh, black male pretenders were doing. We were sort of isolated because social media wasn't a thing. Many of you who are Gen Xers and maybe some of the old, older millennials 
before social media was a big thing, a lot of women, if I have any baby boomers out there, the same thing. So we didn't have a way to really talk and prevent what is happening now out here. But let me tell you something. These niggas are trying to get away with murder. Murder of the black woman. Murder of everything that we have heard them say and do to us as a collective over the past. Uh, I mean, let's just go in recent times because, you know, it's, it, go, it goes back a long way and we talk about things like that uh, privately. But they have been trying to get away with trashing us in social media. And I have talked about it. I've warned black women about this years and years and years ago. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people took it seriously. I think people just... Let me, I'm, 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 let, me, let me stamp my own shit. If I tell y'all some shit about these niggas, it's a fucking fact. <laughs> Just, you, you ain't got to live it out for yourself. You don't have to check any other resources. You don't have to become a part of a bunch of other private groups. I'm just telling you myself. <laughs> if man tells you that niggas ain't shit, go ahead. Hit the like button and believe it. <laughs> because the shit that they're doing out here to y'all ladies, <laughs> y'all have no idea how they have held you back. Now, this is where on, on, social, on YouTube, I usually like to go in on the males. In the private, discussion, I like to expose things that women need to know about us. So if you want balance, you have to be supportive of both of my platforms. You have to join the Patreon. I know a lot of people want me to come back. I know people are comparing me to this other platform that is out here, and I don't need to say who, who it is. I'm not like these bitches. I'm the motherfucking blueprint. Yes, I said it. God damn it. I'm the motherfucking blueprint. And because a lot of times people don't want to hear a thing first and believe it, they wait until somebody else repeats it, markets it, and make a ton of money off of it. That's the way niggas are. But I'm the motherfucking truth. And I know this. And so wasting my time telling a bunch of hard-headed women what time it is, I just, I just decided I'll do it when I can because people took the shit for granted. And these niggas are out here eating black women alive. Black women are lost as hell right now because they drunk the Kool-Aid. They bit the apple. They took the bait. They rolled in the car and said, the Bonnie and Clyde concept is ours. You get where I'm going with it now? I just thought of some shit. And I want to shout out to my, sis, my, my private supporter. I just saw some shit that lets me know that black women, we have got to make some changes. There are some hood rats out here that have taken over. And we have got to fight back with a better image, a better version of ourselves. You have to be motivated. You have to lose the addiction to the hood rat culture. You have to lose it. These niggas are pretending that they did not completely infiltrate the minds of black women. They are pretending that the shit that they have done, yes, through the being pimps in the fucking pulpit, 
by the, by being corrupt athletes, corrupt preachers, corrupt rappers, corrupt politicians, corrupt social media big mouths. They have been talking and fucking and talking and fucking and destroying every fucking thing that they talk to and fuck. <laughs> you get where I'm going with it. These are the dirtiest, these are the ugliest, dirtiest men on the face of the planet. They are ugly, they have fat necks, they are fat, they are black, they are crispy, they are crudders, they are ugly. <laughs> They belong in the motherfucking wild. They're liars. They're cheaters. They're soon to be retreaters. Like Lauren Hill said, there's some dirty punks that want to pack each other in the back. These are some backwoods wild beasts that are waiting for you to bring home your food stamps. These are the same niggas who talk about fucking and getting all up in your guts. They're sexually violent. They're demonic. Their breath stinks. They can't read. They can't do math. They don't speak well. Their feet stinks. They snore like loud animals. These whole ass niggas will use anything but a decent way to get a fucking head. A dollar. These are some mama hating, white girl loving pieces of shit. And most of all, there's some serious gaslighters. There's some energy vampires. They're womanizers. They're sexist pigs. They're users. They're tricksters. They're nasty. And I don't understand why I am the only YouTuber who is willing to call them out and to call out how they have affected black women. Black women, when you know how nasty these pieces of shit are, these shits are, you would never walk in the path with them. You would never allow yourself to lose freedom with these fuck niggas. Oh, black women are losing all their freedom. Globally, universally. You don't even see it, but black women are allowing these males to influence their personalities, their character, their choices in life. Come on. They can't read. All they want to do is sit up and act like they control a woman. and monitor you and try to and set you up in all kind of nasty disease ridden love triangles and crime stories. But they're pretending that they're not doing a motherfucking thing. You know, you have enough I, I thought about that shit. I said, hold on a sec. <laughs> you know, you walk around, you go places, you see them, you notice that they're acting like they have done nothing as a race of men, and truly they have done nothing, but the something that they did was wicked and demonic, and they're acting like they have had nothing to do with it. 
They're taking no fucking accountability for the evil that they have spread, not only to black women, black kids, and basically to the world. They're just walking around like they nothing. It, it, you got to get this. When I really think about how they're not even acknowledging how shitty they are, how dirty they have done things towards black women, it is criminal. If you'll get the likes up, please. Y'all, I'm not like these other YouTubers. I come on here when I really want to talk to y'all. I'm not coming on here for games, okay? So when I come on, I would appreciate your support. Thank you so kindly. That's the way YouTube used to be back in the day. You came on when you had a message. You came on when you had something that you felt passionate about discussing. You came on when you really wanted to connect with your audience, not because it's a job, but because the Divine Mother has given you authority over these no good niggas and you want to speak out about it. And every time I think about how passive Black women are to how no good these men are and how they have led black women astray. I get mad about it. I get pissed about it. Everywhere black women went to support these fuck niggas, they have let black women down. And it's so unfortunate for black women because black women was so busy trying to support these niggas, black women have not built or created anything of our own. Now, I don't mean that you haven't created something for yourself. I said for of our own. Like own, O-W-N, own, like the Oprah Winfrey Network. I had to throw it out there. And I know some of y'all hate Oprah, but you shouldn't. God damn it. Because now I, I said to myself for years, why do these women hate Oprah? Why do they hate her so much? You know why y'all hate her? Because you unconsciously were being seduced to support hood rat garbage. I said it and I said it again. You rejected Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama because whether you realized it or not, you were supporting hood rat bullshit. Because if you don't want to see us at our best, then you want to see us at our motherfucking worst. And don't tell me about Oprah and, 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 and a check and donations and Africa and white people crying on her show. Don't give it to me like that. God damn. That's, that's true. That's right. That's right. Because RJ, that's right. She said they hate Oprah but love Beyonce. And y'all lifted up Beyonce. Maybe not some of my actual true supporters. <laughs> so when I say y'all, y'all know what I mean. But they lifted up Beyonce. When What did Beyonce do for black women? She told us that girls run the world. She said that she gave all of the independent women a shout out in a song. Y'all name the song. She put out all of this stuff. Girl, you know, and crying with black women and all that. And what does she do? She, aired, she marries one of the ugliest, most inhumane looking monkeys, camels, whatever hybrid he is. I don't give a damn if he has money. He's ugly. <laughs> and he's a womanizer and he has a dirty team. And he has drug her and raped her over the coals where black women said, this is who I can't wait to spend several hundred or a thousand dollars to go see in a concert because that is my idol because she's dumb. You see, they said she has something that I want. And, and I told you, if you and, and, and I was worried when Michelle Obama was 
intermingling with Beyonce and and Be and, and Jay Z. I said this is inappropriate. This is a wrong endorsement. <laughs> Those two worlds don't need to mix. There's no hood rat girl mixing with the best of black women. I'm sorry, God damn it. We need to kill the hood rat culture today. Disassociate, just like y'all divested supposedly from these niggas. You said you divested from the niggas, but if you love hood rats and you endorse that culture and that bullshit, you might as well go back to the niggas. You may as well go back to the great pretenders. Who brought you there? Because the hood rat is nothing but what the nigga said she can be. And these niggas out here from zero to, to 50, zero to 60, whatever their age is, zero to 70, they're pretending that they just, that they did not just destroy what do we have? Four or five generations on the planet right now. Let's go all the way up to, to 90. <laughs> Shit, the leftover, there's only a few. The leftover silent generation, those niggas were crazy, abusive, demonic, violent, alcoholic, moonshine, shoe-spitting, shine the white man shoe punks. Okay, so you had the, the silent generation. Right, then you had the baby boomers. Then you had the millennials. Excuse me, you had the silent generation. You had the baby boomers. You have Generation X, the millennials. Now we have Generation Z. And then after that, we got this motherfucking alpha. This alpha generation that's coming up. That's too many generations to fuck up in one lifetime. And what gets me about these niggas, they're such great pretenders. You know the song, I Am the Great Pretender by the Platters? I was playing that before the live, and I was realizing that, you know, that song always gave me the fucking creeps. It always gave me the creeps. I'm the great pretender. You know that song. And it's like, that's that nigga prophesying over generations that he is the great pretender. He will keep black women ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. He will keep this woman dumb with four degrees. Because only what she knows, if only what she knows didn't scare her half to death. Then she could have known so much more. But where black women are, are afraid, when they're not afraid, they're suffering with ignorance. Hovering between fear and ignorance. To get rid of this great pretender, to, to call him out, to stop serving him, to stop needing him. To stop admiring him. How can you admire something that's not real? How can you admire something that gaslights you all day long? And when you see yourself moving through this, this planet, this earth, then you know that you are moving through a lot of the negative electromagnetic waves that these demons have set in place and in order. There's a, a spiritual warfare going on that the hood rat has embraced. When I speak of the hood rat, the fucking hood rat is the nigga with a vagina at this point. Y'all see it and you act like you don't see it. You know it's true, but you don't want it to be true or you don't want anybody to call it out. So what are these pretenders doing? They're hiding in the black woman's vagina at this point, if you ask me.
they have permeated the souls of black women at this point. And somebody doesn't want that message to get out. Because it's better for women to be victims than to be perpetrators. Somebody doesn't understand that as long as women, as long as women remain blind, deaf, and dumb to what these great pretenders have done, then women become the greatest enemy of all times. You know, it's one thing to know that these niggas are monsters, but uh, you want to know, I'm going to let me do, since they don't hear me when I speak proper, let me do it like this. You know what's worse <laughs> than a monster that you know? It's not the monster that you don't know. It's a monster who's pretending that they are not a monster and they look like you. Because there's a contract that has been made between some of these women and these niggas. That's why these niggas are sitting back right now with their feet propped up. Because the work is being done through many, many women at this point. And so these women have traded in their souls for dirty pain. They have traded in their souls so that they could have a father for their children. They have traded in their souls because they're afraid that somehow the black man has a heaven to put them in and that she won't get into that heaven without him unless she forgive him because she knows that he's useless and he's helpless. He's powerless. And the part where black women screwed up is where they decided that seeing this nigga in his powerlessness is terrifying. That's where black women messed up. Every now and then I'll watch a crime show and the woman will say, well, that's not good enough. He deserves the death penalty for what he took from us. You see, every now and then they'll let that thing out, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough when women are made, divinely made, to outlive and outlast these niggas. But yet women are codependent on these niggas. They act like these niggas are the bread of heaven. They act like these niggas are manna <laughs> from heaven. They act like they need this great pretender to survive, to gain access in society, to get a down, down payment on a home. They act like they need him for a tax refund. <laughs> you, see, you get where I'm going? This is not true. And the worst of this is these niggas walking around pretending that they did nothing. Think about for a minute, if you will, the just say you riding around, you going to work, you riding around trying to get trying to get it, girl. You see somebody working at a store, looks like a nigga. Yes, ma'am, may I help you? Yes, I'm looking for blah 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 in the store. Can you help me find it? Oh, sure, it's right over there. No problem. You see what I'm saying? No, 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 no. That 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 normalcy. Fuck that normalcy. Fuck their normalcy. Fuck their normal days. Fuck them appearing to be normal. Because every opportunity these demonic slave drivers got, they use every opportunity for evil. And shame on black women for taking so long to rise up but secondly, shame on any black woman who does not reject their essence within us, within any black woman. What is us and what is them? 
Who are we and who are they? And I told you, a lot of women have sold their souls. They decided that having this son, this son, this one demon, that there's hope. That they're going to be something that the world has never seen. That he's not going to decapitate her ass if given an opportunity. That he's not going to have her hooping and hollering at the grave site or at the court. In the courts, right? Or that he just may get married and walk around acting normal while he secretly hates her. The result of things that's happening with black women right now is because of our own delusions. We have created this mess. We have created a mess where men can do all of the damage that they want and women still thirst for them, long for them, can't eat and can't sleep without them. It's a sickness, God damn it, that black women have to get help for having that sickness. You know, they have the song, I can't eat without you, I can't sleep without you, without you in my life. You know, the nigga always singing something that's coming out of the black woman's emotional data bank. Oh. Did I get too spiritual on YouTube and say something like that? You do know that these niggas are just a shadow of the women that birthed them. You do understand that, don't you? We are the creators. And black women choose to turn a blind, deaf, dumb, stupid, crazy eye to these niggas. And just to give you an idea, an idea of what I'm talking about, let's just hear a little tad bit of how they think about these great wonderful women who produced them, just to remind you. Right? What's the solution? This is gonna be harsh. But one thing I'm gonna tell you is that I'm always gonna be honest with you. I'm always gonna be transparent. I'm always gonna be honest. And I'm going to tell you the absolute positive truth. What's the solution? Right. I'm going to give you two different solutions. I'm going to give you the solutions for the men and I'm going to give you the solutions for the women. And then I'm going to add the context. OK. Let's start with the men. The solution for the men. And I want to add the context before I even really give you the solution, right? For example, I was on a panel on Monday night, and shout out to all of my Monday night panelists. If you did not watch the live stream, it was absolutely awesome. Shout out to Q for putting together a great panel. And we're back in third quarter planning. Adams is quarterbacking this project, and she is looking pretty tired, Jill. I seen a woman or women go against me based off of the idea that I was just a man, right? When you see the Jess Hilariouses and all of these different women that's on these platforms saying that, hey, 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 listen, who going to protect black women? Especially now that men are in our sports and they identifying as us and they walking in our bathrooms and they fucking on us and all of this other type of stuff, right? Who going to defend these women, right? And this is largely a set of women that did this based off of the fact that 
They went against the men that was warning them because no man advocated for them to be able to hang out with dudes that wasn't supposed to be with them. And they was calling them bad bitches while they was fucking them on the side and all of that. Because Neve on Monday said it. He said, listen, yeah, I was hanging out with my homegirls. Neve was the trans that was on the panel on Monday night that added the additional context. And he said, yeah. And he was talking in a deep voice like this. He said, yeah, I used to hang out with my homegirls. And sometimes we would get drunk and we would fool around and I would fuck on them. Right. And so women advocated for this. They advocated for all of the different uh, egregious atrocity atrocities that you see in society today. Right. And so when you take that into consideration and I put myself on a chopping block because in real life, I don't suffer the consequences that I suffer online. But online, I don't have to worry about suffering consequences because it doesn't affect me in real life. Right. And so what you've seen happen on Monday night was. Even though they were arguing with the person that they were disagreeing with, when I then jumped in to say, listen, what you got going on over here, big dog, is a lie. You pretended to be something that you're not. You're really a biological male. You over here fucking on women. Admittedly, you told me that you still over here fucking on your friends and all this other shit, right? And so listen, all of that talking that you're doing and all this stuff that you keep advocating for, I'm not really feeling it. What I seen, and it happened before our very eyes, was women then come against me, even though I was doing the thing that was in their best interest. So the solution... For fellas, is this let them fall, let them fail, let them flounder, and then let them suffer. You will never, ever, and this goes for even your personal relationships, get the submission that you need if they don't understand that it's got to be consequences and extreme failure and suffering. If you do not, you see how he's talking about women and telling guys to let them fall and suffer. <laughs> there are no platforms where black women are really talking to black women about them like this. Not not enough. It's not. It's just this is how they really feel. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't. They don't care to see shit change. I get under my covering and do the shit that you're supposed to do and add the value that you're supposed to add into this conversation. Maybe next week we can go in and we can evaluate and I can break down exactly what you need to be getting because I think that women start to me. They need the solutions to. I'm sympathetic to the idea that maybe you don't even understand what value to a man is. So maybe next week when we do this live, no one gives a fuck what value is to a black man. That's the problem that he needs. He needs to understand that is what it is. Live stream on Wednesday. I will break down to you exactly what it is that you should be doing in order to add value into a man's life. But that's a completely different live stream, right? Oh, y'all, I'm so sick of these motherfucking Americans, man. This adding value to a motherfucker's life that has no value. <laughs> Here's the key. You have to let them fail. You have to let them flounder and you have to let them suffer. And you got to let them go through it. Suffering creates the best type of people men and women but men inherently so they should have stayed in slavery since he said that inherently suffer just by default because that's what it takes in order to be a man you have to let them go through it you got to let her go do not save her from herself when you see these women out here and they are getting their ass kicked re remind them and then step back and then do like this and just let them go through it let them they, these are the same effeminate men who wouldn't help at women anyway. So it's nothing new that he's saying. Go through it. They created it for themselves. You cannot save them from themselves because they will not learn a lesson. They're naturally spiteful, vindictive motherfuckers. This is not because we don't love you. It's not because we are. We he's exactly lying. This is because black men never love black women. It's always a problem. We're not inherently built to just by default go in and protect you, but we can't help you. He's saying that you are inherently by default not able or given a damn to protect a woman, specifically a black woman. If you don't want to help yourself, and if all you're going to do is turn around and stab us in the back when we then go over here to defend you, it does not create a conducive environment for the... This is an effeminate. This, this is a race of effeminate motherfuckers. Black women, stop it. Families that we still look at the build in order to solve the problems that's within our communities. And this is why black women need to get to a place where y'all get tired of fucking families, period. Because all they're doing is using family and marriage against black women to justify their fucking misogyny and hate i'm sick of it somebody's got to stand up against family and marriage at this point because a lot of family shit is cult shit right if you want to get a strong society if you want to get a strong environment if you want to build a phenomenal cult look at the white look at white people's society and some of the asian societies and you'll see strong societies nobody needs a nigga society culture. the culture is only gonna go as far as how strong the men are let's the men destroyed the culture, you motherfucker. So there's nothing to say about what y'all can help build. Stop trying to gaslight us. For some reason, y'all been watching these Woman King videos and you've been watching Marvel fuck up the Marvel Cinematic Universe by continuing to create these woman leads. And you think that you think that 
that's what society is supposed to be. I will tell you this. Marvel is on the path to lose over $800 million in one quarter because they fumbled the fucking bag and they didn't stick with what it was that they were supposed to do in the first place. Yeah, they, they, they don't give a fuck about any damn. Uh, that's, that's, I'm done with that. Let me stop that. Yeah, so, as you, as you can see, they're, they're up to the same tricks. Family, marriage, building society, culture, ugh, everything they hate. That's why every black male celebrity who has any kind of money, they always end up being exposed for being pedophiles, beaters and cheaters, liars, backbiters, and they end up going to prison. They end up losing their wealth. They end up, you know, backpacking it. I'm not gonna say what I wanna say. <laughs> oh boy. This is uh um Betty told you you're online. <laughs> I don't know if Betty told you it's there, but Betty told you you're on live. Hey, RJ, you're on live with me. Okay, now you can you hear me? Yeah, I, we hear you now. Hi. Oh, wow, hey. Hello. Oh, wow, I've never been on stage before, but um, what you were saying about standing up against marriage and these families is absolutely right. They use that, which it, it confuses me sometimes because I don't know how men who abandon their families historically, like it's recorded. Other groups of men have studied why they ab abandon their families like they're like animals, like science experiments. So I really don't understand why outside of just, I don't know. I don't know. Just he can say whatever and do whatever. But yeah, the marriage and the family part gets me every time because black women don't have that. They don't have marriage. They don't have families. So. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of manipulation and, and they like using what they think will morally trigger black women because they think women want relationships um, and women may want love but most of these relationships are so one-sided and controlled by just black male dominance um black male privilege and all of the men really but that's just a whole other story so it's yeah. just it's just a lot of this shit is just a lot of relationships are just you know um i, I just i may have to do a private discussion about this but a lot of relationships end up being more about brainwashing a woman constantly to get her to stay in it. And, you know, if, if relationships really want to impress me, I think at this point, and this is, I want to say to all my married people, this has nothing to do with your marriage, your quality of life, but I'm talking about the bigger picture with how men are using these, this marriage relationship shit to uh, abuse women and um, try to guilt black women into submission. It's, it's the wrong kind of initiation. It, that's just what it is, you know. In a in a world where they have proven that they can't be trusted, um, they certainly enjoy impregnating women at an alarming rate out of wedlock. So there's nothing you need to say about marriage. This they they're the ones who need to put up or shut the fuck up. Yeah, they're the ones yeah, that prove, prove themselves to be husbands and fathers. And I don't know why they don't have to prove it that's why when black women act i don't think it's love i don't think black women love black males at all i feel like it's more of a more out of desperation and mm -hmm. black males take advantage of that and come down on it by saying you have no other options i know you're desperate and you also have no other options so don't think about opening your options don't think about going anywhere else because it makes no sense to me how you can just be so attached to such an abusive male group. Like, it scares me when I see women from when they're not in America, because I'm American, when they're not in America and I see the things they go through. I'm like, this is exactly what band, black males and the women who worship them would want us to do. They would have them slicing our damn clicks off and 
beating us and marrying our daughters off, they would they would be okay with that. It's because of another male group that they can't do that as much as they want. But even in their small circles, those small communities with them, they're abusing the women and girls just left and right. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's scary to me. They really scare me when they get in big groups. I don't like. I don't like it. It feels it feels weird, right? I, I was just telling some of the ladies that uh, recently, privately too. Um, I just I just feel weird around them. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't feel like feel... y'all would just eat me alive. And if you really had the opportunity, if I really let my guard down, y'all would really fuck me up. Basically, y'all would fuck me up. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's that's your intuition and 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 the God is giving you that that grace to, of insight. So that's powerful that you already you're seeing it. You actually got it to a point where you can actually say it out loud. They will fuck you up. Rest they assured. Will fuck me up. Yeah, thanks to you, ladies, who because like I would say maybe four years ago, definitely not before COVID, I had no idea. But like Black femicide triggered it because I'm not a dunce. If if I hear something, mm-hmm. if I don't agree with it, I'll go look it up before I just agree with you off feelings who cares about my feelings who cares about your feelings like i want the facts i want the truth so when i look that shit up i'm like oh my god they are really hourly really just taking us down i cannot Mm -hmm. imagine going to get some tomatoes for some guacamole and i just can't come home because somebody birthed this motherfucker i just can't i could not imagine that that's crazy to me yes and and they're they're counting on playing normal and acting normal to keep everybody calm, but we we need to keep this heightened awareness that there there's nothing about them that's normal. There's nothing normal. Yeah. Does this to their race of women for all these this many damn decades and generations? RJ, what's up? I see you, sis. Hey, hey. So hey. yeah, I, and you know, just going off of what y'all y'all are talking about. Um, you know, that great pretender acting like they would come to your rescue anyway. <laughs> it's it's so funny. It's just like that that guy that you put on there, so pathetic. Like he was like, Oh, let them fall. Like, um, sir, you're the only one falling. Okay. <laughs> like you're, you're the one falling. <laughs> like, I I mean the and, and um Betty, you're right. The desperation in, in women has to, it, 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 it's, it's got to stop. But at the same time, this man is acting like he he has uh, Black women's interest at heart in the first place. Like, that is, um, that's, that's the crock of shit. <laughs> you know? Like, just looking at him, um, you could tell that he was ready. He was uh, rubbing his hands like a fucking worm. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you advice, boy. I mean, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> like, like you already know that men like that are not are are not giving women advice that um, that we care about. Like, cause, women aren't even talking to them, so they don't know. Who yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who, who's who, what women are watching? Um, him, except desperate women, anyway. And that's female PO. That's the only woman watching him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, this idea of you know they're they're trying to like act normal and be normal. This is the, this is a big problem, and this is how they catch these women off guard, pretending to be normal, and then you privately they go off the rails, and then these women get all flustered, like, "Oh, I don't, I don't understand what happened." Like he was, no, he's not. He's never been that. Okay, like whatever y'all thinking. As a collective, these men were never, okay? Well, I don't like, even know how to feel because with a non-black male, they'll be like, oh, he's a man, so you should expect it. A man can do that. A man can do that. They don't treat... 
um, black males, like men, they don't. They treat them like puppy dogs and little babies. But then, then I have to look at you weird because you see him as a child, but you want to have babies with him. So it's just, it's just very weird and degenerate. Anything surrounding them is very creepy and weird because when they read about Asian men being degenerate, Hispanic men, white men, they're like, oh, well, he's a man. What did you expect? But when the bandit does the same thing, it's like he gets an excuse. So what is he? Is he a man? Is he a woman? Is he a, a fucking troglodyte? What is he? What What is he supposed to be? What standards <laughs> does he get held to? Like, we don't expect any. He can just do whatever. It's like they, they <laughs> deify black males. It's weird. It's very creepy. And I can see it in their eyes. They always look spaced out. Right. But but the problem the problem is that especially with black men in this country is that they they don't have the you, you know they they're they're in a culture they're in a society within a society so that's the yeah. the, the issue cuz they're they're men within men and they're children with a like it, it's a subset group it's a subset group of men well, because, because they don't function, they don't function like because they they're not in control of shit. So I mean, like you you know when you you're not in control of, of of things, you you piled up with the same group as children and women. Like you you I in the same group. I think like you males. you round it up in the same group as children, women, dogs, cats. Like, I think their women. reproduction should be controlled by the state because they've reduced themselves and all that is at their own their own power. They've reduced themselves to women and children as men not saying women and children are less but in a patriarchy that's how it goes. They act like they can't control it. I do believe black males reproduction should be controlled by the state 100 percent. they want child support ended so they go to the state for everything and they want to go to the president well a presidential candidate for that they're campaigning for that in california the reparations committee whatever the the bandit brigade that's what i call them they want child support ended in california only for black men and in the whole state of california so I feel like their reproduction should be controlled by the state 100%. I don't know why they just don't sterilize them in prison. <laughs> I wish they would. There's no reason he should be coming out making more babies. Like, what the hell is going on? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we got about seven minutes, so say whatever y'all want to know. That's it. I definitely think black males should be sniffed in prison. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Then standing on business. <laughs> well said. Uh, yeah, they're they're not they're not impressive enough to to even be desperate about. And black women need to stop with this nonsense. Like, and um, you know, part of me thinks that you know, um, like Betty said, like. Like these women don't love these men, neither. They're just, okay. they're just. Um, I don't know what to call it, but they just, they just. Um, what 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 do you call it? Slumming. You know what I mean? Once yeah. once they get what once they get their life together and they try to like m move up in the world, they dump these men, and and then that's when the men start flailing around talking about you can't leave me this that and the other because because uh, it can't be love because love love don't look at you like that and, and 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 think that you're worthy to be here like with what you're doing like purposely like it doesn't make any sense so these women be slumming and when they get their act together they want to fly out of the 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 dumpster and these men be pulling them down and that's where black femicide comes the minute that these women try to have a glimpse of of uh reality these men are like oh no you're not <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so just just skip the whole nonsense and don't bother with these I fools 
I do want to say to Spring Flower, um, for the, I just want to say this because I've, I've said this before on my Twitter. I'm Backseat Betty on Twitter. For if you. Okay, do, no, no plugs, no plugs. Okay, okay go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, sorry. But if you feel like, if you want to talk about white men, go hang out with white women. There's white rap films, there's white radical feminists, there's white feminists. They talk about the dangers of white men all day as black women we don't have to do that if you want to hear the dangers of white men specifically you can go into spaces with white women you really can i don't know why you don't go over there they talk about white men all day just like asian women talk about asian men black Mm -hmm. women we're supposed to talk about black men like that's what we're supposed to do everybody needs to check their male group i don't want to sit up and talk about white men their victims are usually white so I think that's silly as hell. That's stupid. Yeah. Like, uh, I I agree with that. Go to the spaces with the experts in yes. <laughs> in those spaces because yeah. no, the, it's it's true. I I, I I'm not. Uh, I I actually agree with that advice because white women have really great uh, point of view when it comes to white men and. Their, you know, um, their um, deficiencies, and because uh, they they <laughs> they got their own problems too. Yeah, so who better to tell you than the woman who grew up with him, who grew up in his home, who was a victim yeah. of that as a child? Like that's all their stuff. If you want to hear about his degeneracy, go into those spaces and listen to those women. But you don't want to do that because you really don't give a shit about white women. So that's just annoying. Like, we need to handle our space. Everybody likes to act like no one cares about black women and girls. But when we talk about who victimizes us the most, then you know, don't talk about them. Talk about white men. White men hurt white people the most. It's pro- It was all proximity during BLM. Proximity, proximity. Oh, black people kill black people the most because of proximity. You don't bring that up. That's racist. But now proximity doesn't apply. That's stupid. You're damn right, it's stupid. Yep, yep. So, I mean, okay. All right. Anything else, ladies, before we go? No, I love That's you. Weird. I want you Thank to know. Thank you. I and I listen. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I do love you so much. And thank you. You, you, you have yeah. taught me so much, truly. I appreciate it, Betty. Told you. Love you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. RJ is my partner in crime with this thing, y'all. So I, I appreciate her popping in. Thank you, Betty. Told you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye bye. Yeah. So, ladies, look. Um, as I said, I did a private live, and it's for my top two tiers because we are a growing intellectual, spiritual community. Of, it's a small group of women, but we are growing. And we have that advanced um, validation and confirmations with each other that I don't think any other group is giving each other because the way I do my group is it's we are a living, thinking, growing organism together. So it's not like one dictator and then this one person is the, you know, RJ helps me lead the group, but we are not like it. The other women are super, super intelligent and smart. And, um, Together, we get to be that together. So um, join the Patreon because that is where I just, I don't like putting my best work out all the time on YouTube because of the way people are. Hit the likes. People don't appreciate anything when it's free. Um, That is what I was, it was a proven fact. You know, I was on here for years cranking out idea after idea after idea. You will never know the platforms that I helped birth because I was putting out so many ideas for women to pick up on. But that's fine. I know I'm the blueprint and that is what it is. Also, I want to say the reason you need to know about the blueprint is the topic that I'm going to talk about for a little bit here. And I'm going right over to my private group. It's Patreon, but we also but we do the conversations in another platform. Um, so you have to be a member. You just have to sign up. Take the time to do the damn thing, ladies. Take your time. Do shit. It's for all tiers. Five dollars, ten dollars, and the higher two tiers. My, this this conversation you see on the screen. This is my higher two tiers, and then I invited 
a couple of other ladies so that they could participate and provide feedback like they do. Um, cultivating a group of, of super smart, intelligent Black women who understand how to balance power is very hard to do. There's usually groups of Black women, the power starts getting imbalanced. But because I am a divine being, I understand how to balance power um, and how to honor others as well as myself. So that is hard to get. And that leads me to, if you look on the screen, you see the secret sauce. I want to provide a, a small rant about the secret sauce warnings. Uh, we've been talking about Risa Tisa for a couple of lives, and I have a few other things I want to say about that, kind of bringing the conversation we just had on to a private conversation about us as women and just some shit that a couple of downloads that I just got. And when I get my downloads, I definitely share them with my private group. Um, I want to say this. If you, you might like information. If you like information, I'm the girl for you. If you like wisdom, I am definitely the woman for you. Okay. So that is two different things. So like getting information and talking, well, there's huge platforms out there that have information. If you like cultivating wisdom, then that is me, okay? Because there are people right now who don't get how to put all this information together and support other women and support themselves, period. It's like, then it becomes like this little, I know this and y'all don't know that type of thing. I'm not, fuck all that. I just know, know not to put everything on YouTube now. Um, keep, keep getting those likes up, ladies. Um, I, I took my time. I like to come out here when I really feel it, you know, because I'm, I'm I'm not into the fake shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and uh, so when I when I come out here, it is a it's, a, it's a, because I love it, okay, it's a sacrifice on my part to take the time, I want to thank Springfly and Diva Kika for being my mods, and I want to thank my patrons personally for being a patron for all of the length of time that you and your dollar amount allows you to be a patron of mine, and whatever tiers you're in, all of you are loved, all of you are appreciated, all of you are keeping me here, the, the patrons are keeping me here. Okay. That is the fact. That's a motherfucking fact. Okay. Because thought of like what that nigga just said, black women deserve to just, just let them fall. <laughs> because I have women who are standing with me, that is why black women will not fall. But the women who will stand, there's a difference when somebody said don't fall and when somebody is able to stand. So we're not falling, we're standing as women together. And I encourage you to join the private group. Uh, organize, organize yourselves and participate in a private space where we are cultivating wisdom and insight beyond what we do, way beyond. We be killing it, y'all. Y'all have no how much. I'm going to tell you right now, y'all have no idea how many videos I've done through the years. I'm sure it's, it's over a thousand. In my Patreon alone, I have, I don't even know how many. I've lost track. Really rich shit. I'm out of here, y'all. I'm going over to Patreon. I want to get a few things off of my chest. A few downloads that I received um, about the secret sauce warnings. If you're looking for the first topic that I just put on the screen, which is this one, that is my esoteric message. That is the one I did a week ago. That is the one that you have to be in the highest tiers to be able to hear. But if you want to hear this one that I'm about to do, the secret sauce warnings, just join, period. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out. I love you. Bye, woman, forever.